similar that we actually treat all the fluid present in those 74 trillion cells to be one fluid, fluid present in one compartment or one cell. So very similar fluid in all of our cells. So intracellular fluid compartment is one. Then we have extracellular fluid compartment, which is really fluid present everywhere outside the cells, wherever it is present that all collectively is extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid compartment then in turn is divided into intravascular as we saw here. So this is intravascular, intravascular and interstitial which is here, interstitial. So intravascular and interstitial. They both are part of extracellular. There is actually one more extracellular compartment which is called transcellular. There is one more which is called transcellular, but usually not really um, studied as part of the uh, body fluid compartments. It is pretty stable, about 2 liter of the whole fluid is present in the transcellular. What that is, is really the fluid present in our joint cavities, the fluid present in the pericardial sac, the fluid present in the peritoneal sac, CSF and so on. So that fluid all collectively is called the transcellular fluid. Usually not studied within the uh, context of the body fluids just because it does not change that quickly. But the remaining fluids would be, you would see that they would be shifting and increasing and reducing. So, um, transcellular is also part of the extracellular. Another very important thing is that the composition of the transcellular is different from the composition of the other two compartments for the extracellular. So that is a dissimilarity. Okay. So these are the basic uh, compartments which we have. Now, interestingly, so as as we just established, this whole compartment is extracellular. But within that, we have two subcompartments. So the question becomes, why do we have to further division inside these compartments? The reason for that is that the blood vessels, so I can actually just go ahead and make a little, make this look like a blood vessel. So let's say this is a blood vessel. So the blood vessels and the the fluid present inside the blood vessel has a different composition as compared to the fluid present inside the remaining interstitial space. So that is why we separate the extracellular or we divide the extracellular fluid into two primary compartments, intravascular and uh, interstitial. We will talk more about what is the composition, dif uh, the composition differences between them. Now as a medical student, as a doctor, as a nurse, you have to understand one very important thing. What keeps the fluid in a particular compartment? So let us say that if I say I have 3 liters of plasma here, you should be able to tell me why that plasma, why that fluid does not just spill into the interstitial compartment and drain the blood vessels dry. or reverse. Why does all the intercellular fluid, interstitial fluid not move into the blood vessels and just stay in there? What keeps it separated from here to here? Similarly, you would notice as we progress further in our lecture that the fluid which is present here usually does not just move out. It is not that the cells would just collapse and all the fluid would move out and start sitting in the extracellular fluid. So what keeps the fluid in here? So that is the most important thing, that how does the maintenance of volume happen, number one. And of course, from there, then we would talk about what causes the shift in those volumes. Will there be a situation where the volume here would reduce? What will cause that? Or will we have a situation where the volume here will increase? What will cause that? Will we have a situation where the volume here would reduce or increase? And what would be the factors? What will be the factors which would affect the volume here? What would be the factors which are keeping these compartments intact as they are? So these are the important things which we have to understand. So let's start first of all from the very basic thing that where do we get water from? So um, I want to establish one thing. 
usually the intake brings the fluid into the vascular compartment. Usually the fluid is added to the vascular compartment. From here it will move into the interstitial compartment if it has to and from there it will move into the intracellular compartment if it has to. Similarly, when the fluid is ejected, I am talking about physiological situations, normal physiological situation, normal healthy person. I am not talking about pathological situations, I am not talking about denudation or of the skin or I am not talking about the damaged viscera and so on. I am talking about normal physiological situation where a healthy person, we need to know how the water is added to the body and we need to know how the water is removed from the body. So, the water removal is also going to be working through the, the intravascular system. So, of course, there are organ systems which are attached here. For example, for the injection or intake of the water, we have the GIT. Similarly, for the exit, so let us say this is the intake. Similarly, for the water loss, we would have some organ system. I think you are aware of the kidney. That is a system we are actually trying to study and this is the context we are establishing for the kidney. So, the renal system is one of the system which helps us uh, lose water or helps, uh, helps us regulate the amount of water by uh, deciding how much water to lose. So, the water is coming into the vascular system, water is exiting from the vascular system. The interstitial fluid and the, in, the intracellular fluid are then going to respond to the changes which are appearing here. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and if possible, share it with your friends as well.